Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commandments of God and are holding on to human traditions. And he continued, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is put to death. But you say that if anyone declares the w- that what might have been used to help their father or mother is Corbin, Carbon, that is devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. so much for being here, for the freedom that we have. We thank you for the love that you have given us. Your ways are perfect and true. May we worship your holy name. May your spirit be upon this place today, Father, as we seek your word and your wisdom for our lives. We just thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, should be on. So, I entitled this Jesus' Final Words because today we're going to look at some of Jesus' final words. See what He has to say. And you might be surprised some of the things that He talked about. One of the very last things that He talked about was His mama. And we're here to honor mothers today. I was lucky. I was blessed with a wonderful mother. She decided to go to work and worked a career at Florida Department of Law Enforcement for 40, 50 years. I don't know how many years. But the reason that she started going to work was so that she could send me to a Christian school. And I thank her for that. She made sure that I was in church. She made sure that I read bedtime stories with the Bible and everything. I was very blessed to have a godly mother. Their mothers are special. They carry us in their womb. They protect us. They give us birth. And then after that, they're there to nurture and care for us. Now, not all moms are perfect. But does that mean that we're not supposed to honor our mothers? Not at all. Look at Jesus' commands. It's not conditional upon how they act or behave. God still gave you the mother that He gave you. So if your mother wasn't a testimony and a witness to you, you definitely need to be a testimony and witness to her if you're in here today because you know Jesus. Your light can shine to her. God instilled in mothers that instinct to care for their children. But not all mothers do that. Because, see, we're all sinners. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. So don't ever condemn your mother for behaving a certain way because you'll be pointing your fingers right back at yourself, right? Because there's so many ways that we have not lived up to a godly standard. But because God loved us, He decided to give us mercy rather than the punishment that we deserved. He decided to pour out grace and adopt us into His very own because of how much He loves us and how perfect He is. So let's think about Mary a little bit today. The privilege that she had to be the mother of Jesus Christ our Lord. But look at what that also carried because she was there at the cross and watched Him be humiliated and whipped and beaten and then crucified. And she was right there standing beside watching her baby boy being put to death. Maybe she understood some, maybe she didn't, that Jesus Christ had come to die for the sins of the world, but still think of the heartache that that mother had to have for her child and to know that there was nothing that she could do about it except be there. Sometimes that's all a mother can do is be there so that their child knows that they're there for them. Ephesians 6, 2 says, Honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise. Maybe you've studied that, maybe you've looked at that before, but it has a promise tied to it. So we need to look back at Exodus 20, where Paul is quoting from, and see what that is. Exodus 20, verse 12 says, Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. So that you may live long and that you may have blessings. Because God gave them that land, that land of milk and honey that He promised to them. A land of peace, a land that was brought out from slavery. 
And he says, honor your mother and father because I gave you those parents. They weren't conditionalized again. You're supposed to honor your mother. And you know as well as I know that if we tend to let our light shine, if we tend to, to be the kind of people we should be, that it's kind of contagious. So even like I said, if we have a good mother or a bad mother, if she shows her light, then it affects us. If we show our light, it affects her. It's the way God designed that. That we have a part, we have a testimony, we have a part in the salvation message of Jesus Christ. Leviticus 29 says, Anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. Because they have cursed their father or mother, their blood will be on their own head. God was serious when He gave these commandments. It's the first commandment after commandments about the Lord. The first three commandments are about God and our worship and then the Sabbath. And then we have honor your father and mother. Because see, I told you last week that if we figure out the covetous part, we can work our way back. If we figure out God is Lord of our life, we can work our way through. But right there in the middle is to honor your father and mother. Because if you can't honor the person who gave you birth, that decided to bring you into this world, how are you ever going to be able to respect and honor others and properly preach the gospel message? And some of us have that problem. We have wanted to blame our mother for this and that. When she was the mother that God gave us and we're supposed to honor our mother. And today that's what we're here to do. And ladies, we have another surprise for you later. Okay, another little gift. So my question is, do you honor your mother the way you're supposed to? Okay? Maybe you do. Maybe you just take her for granted every once in a while. Maybe you're disrespectful some and stuff, and you don't appreciate the mother that God gave you because of the things that she did. But again, God gave you the mother that He gave you, good, bad, or indifferent. Like I said, I thank the Lord for the mother that He gave me. I don't have to experience the bad mother or the mother that gave me up or anything else. I can't relate to that, and I praise God for that. But if you can relate to that, still praise God because He's in control of all things, and He has a plan for you to live a life that brings Him glory and honor. So if you remember in Luke 11 when we were talking about that, we talked about the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, right? And we kind of seen that in the Scripture this morning again. That Jesus told them that, yeah, they clean the outside of the cup and plate for everybody to see, but on the inside they're nasty, dirty, filthy, and they need Jesus to clean them from the inside out, to give them a new heart through the power of the Spirit. And we saw that today again in the Scriptures. Jesus is saying, whoa, you don't have to have the outcome. You don't have to behave the way that you are behaving. Repent, change your mind and come to me and I will give you healing. I will give you food. I will give you springs of living water. That's what we're here for. It's what our church is called. So that we can be springs of living water to the world. So I ask you again, do you honor your mother? I didn't say love your mother or anything. That's not what Scripture says. Do you honor your mother? See, both of those are a choice. It's a choice to love someone because it's easy to love someone who loves you back. But if you've had kids, if you're married, you know that you have to love in spite of them loving you back and making you feel special ooey-gooey feeling and everything that you choose to love in those hard times. So why is it any different with your mother? And why is it any different in giving her respect because of the position that she is in, that she is the one that gave you birth? Ephesians 6, 2 and 3, we read verse 2 earlier, but 2 and 3 says, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. Then it's tied together with a prepositional phrase, So that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on earth. So Paul expands a little bit on what that means. That it may go well with you. Well, who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want their life to go well? First thing is start honoring your mother, right? Now that doesn't mean that everything's going to be just hunky-dory and easy, but the first step is to honor your mother. And you may en that you may enjoy long life on the earth. So you get two promises here. That you may enjoy long life. Enjoy the life you have and that it may be long upon this earth. I used to tell Jacob all the time whenever he disrespected his mom, I'm like, there goes a year. And he'd just look at me like, Dad, you've done that before too, Barry? <laughs> Because we don't want to think that way, but, but here it is. 
If you honor the mother that, that God gave you, that is pleasing to Him. That is part of our proper worship. The Pharisees didn't do that. They appeared to. They appeared to follow all the commands. And we'll get into the scripture here in just a minute. But it was all an appearance because they wore a mask. They were hypocrites. They were actors on a stage saying, we believe this and everything, but we're just playing a role. And you're not going to see the real person to guess what? You expose yourself and take that mask off. And it may be painful and hurtful. But when you take that mask off, you can see what's really there. And Jesus, if you'll let Him, can come in and make everything new. That's why we're compared to a new creation. Because God no longer sees us in our sin and shame. But He sees us in the righteousness of Jesus Christ if we just truly believe in Him. So the first thing that Jesus told us to be aware of in Luke chapter 12 is beware of the, hypoc of the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. The first thing that He told us to be warned about, because we tend to not want to say, I don't like my mother. I'm disrespectful to my mother. Why would we want to say that about ourselves? We want to say, I love my mama. She's a good woman. But if we back talk her, or if we take her for granted even, or anything else, do we love her and give her the respect that she deserves? I'm going to make sure I call my mama today. Because <laughs> she was a blessing to me. I, I think about it all the time, that how much of an impact that she had in my life developing and everything, and I praise God for her. So let's look at the scripture from this morning and see what it said. Mark chapter 7, starting in verse 5. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? Now if you read back into this, Jesus had just come into the area People were coming out in groves, and if they simply touched the garment of Jesus, they were healed. We can look back. I'll, look, I'll grab my Bible, and we'll look back and see. You don't have it, Diana. So This r record is also in Matthew chapter 15. But in Mark chapter 6, We have the feeding of the 5,000. What a miracle there. We have Jesus walking on the water. But then when they had crossed over to the other side, starting in verse 53 of Mark 7, when they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. See, the thing is, is what do you do with that recognition? Is He just a prophet? Is He a good man? Is He a martyr? Or is He the Son of God that for, can forgive sins? That's why Jesus had said before, what is more powerful, what is something more blasphemous to say than this person is healed, get up and take your mat and walk, or that your sins are forgiven? Because see, only the Son of God, only Jesus, the only way, the only truth, and the only life is the only one that can forgive people of their sins and make you anew. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region, the whole area. Word spread immediately. And they ran to Jesus. Now the problem is, is they ran to Jesus for what Jesus could give them physically, not spiritually. Because they didn't see the truth in that yet. Maybe some of them did. They ran throughout that whole region and carried the sick on mats and wherever they and to wherever they heard He was. Because they knew that Jesus could do something about their physical ailments. And wherever He went, into the villages, towns, or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged Him to let them touch even the edge of His cloak. And all who touched Him were healed. See, power was just flowing out of Jesus. He didn't have to go up and say, do you want to be healed? He didn't have to take mud and wipe it in someone's eyes. They simply touched His garment as He was passing by, and they were healed. But that's what they wanted. That's where they wanted to stop. They didn't want a Lord of their life. They wanted a Savior for the physical things, but they didn't want someone to be Lord. And see, that's exactly what Jesus is, is He is Lord, whether you accept Him as that or not. 
So chapter 7 starts out with the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. So they came from Jerusalem, but for what reason? To see how they could condemn Him. Why? They had seen Him doing these miracles. They got to see this with their own eyes if they hadn't seen anything else. And yet they wanted to discredit Him. Knowing that the very miracles that He performed were by the hand of God. As we learned in Scripture before, Jesus gave them that that analogy and said, if, if I'm performing miracles by the devil, then who are your people performing miracles from? There was no doubt whatsoever that Jesus was a man of God. But yet he said, I'm the son of God. So what do we do with that? They saw some of his disciples eating food, verse 2, with hands that were unclean, that is unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders, not the law or anything. When they come from the marketplace, they do do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. Kind of ironic. Those cups are clean, right? But there's still contamination there. So see, they were looking for a reason why not to believe. The reason to condemn God. So instead of seeing the miracles that were before their eyes, they said, let's see what we can do to find something to to convict Jesus, to make Him stumble, to show that He's not who He says He is, which never, ever happened. So Jesus replied when He asked this question about defiled hands. And let me go back to that. Again, that wasn't something scriptural. That was something that they had put into the law, that they needed to wash, and there were so many extensive writings of this. So Jesus was not breaking something against laws. That was a law set up for the high priest, but not for people to go do. Should we wash our hands and stuff? Sure, to be clean. Was it anything to defile against God? Not whatsoever. So Jesus replied, verse 6, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. Hypocrites again. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. See, there's the problem. Do you honor your mother, or do you just say you do? Are your hearts close to Jesus? Because if you do, you'll honor your mother no matter what. You may not understand everything, but you know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. He's quoting from Isaiah 29 verse 13 is who he's quoting from. So he's using their own scriptures that they know well to condemn them and to prove prophecy. Verse 8, You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. You're not trying to follow the commands. You're not trying to teach people to obey the law. You're trying to oppress them by making and creating laws that only you can because you want to be better than they are to say that you're more righteous to say that you really love your mother and honor her, when yet your actions and deeds are far from that. And Jesus continued, You have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your traditions, your own traditions. So he says it again. For Moses said, from what we read earlier, Honor your father and mother. And we also read in Leviticus, Anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. 11. But... That complete contradiction. You know those laws. You say that you do them with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. So you've come up with this rule. You say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is carbon, it's something that they had set aside. What they did was said, all the money that I have, I'm going to dedicate to God and to His service. It's been dedicated, therefore... I can't do anything else with it. So if you come up with a need or whatever, I can't help you because I'm using this money for God's service. Now that really sounds like a good thing, doesn't it? Especially the reason that they did it in their hearts was so that they wouldn't have to take care of their mother as she was a widowed elderly woman in society needing the help, honor, and support of her son. You see, that's what a good Jewish son should do is take care of their mother later, the mother that raised them up. But they said, I'm going to give this money over to God, so I can't help you, Mom. You're on your own. Now, what is that saying about honoring your father and mother? It sounded like a good thing. I'm giving this money to God. 
But if it's so that you can keep and control it and have it for your own and not help others, especially your mother, then do you see what was really going on? Their hypocrisy was really deep. I don't know if they knew what they were doing, if they even understood it or fathomed it, but they were so far from honoring their mother. They were so far from the commands of God. Verse 12, Then you no longer let them do anything, not do some things, but anything, because that money was locked up for their father or mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And you do many things like that. Many of the rules were set up for that reason. We've got to assume that since we don't hear much from Scripture about Joseph, Mary was there with other women at the cross, that he probably was deceased. We don't know it. But again, in that time, the lifespan of the men were even less than the women because it was a volatile situation. The average lifespan of a man might be 40 and a woman might be 50. So there were widows, and Paul talks about taking care of widows all the time and everything. There were widows out there that needed to be taken care of, but here were these Jewish sons that said, not me, someone else will have to take care of her. I know she's my mother and I honor her and everything, but this money set aside for God. I can't take care of her. What a travesty that they had. They didn't understand commandment number one, that thou shalt love the Lord thy God. They didn't understand commandment ten, that thou shalt not covet, because that's what brought this on. And they sure didn't understand commandment five, to honor your father and mother, so that the days may be long and you may enjoy them in the land that the Lord your God has given you, not that you obtain by your own means and your own might, but by the land that God gave them. They were play acting. They were wearing a mask. They were hypocrites. And Jesus exposed them. They needed to clean the outside, but they surely needed to clean the inside. I gave that example before when we talked about that, about the dishes looking clean, and then the fact that we found out that the dog had licked them clean. That's not too clean in my eyes. Although they say a dog's mouth is cleaner than ours, but I don't believe that either. <laughs> it's not in my Bible, so I don't think it's a truth. <laughs> So they had witnessed all of these miracles and everything, but they were looking for a reason to discredit Jesus instead. They were looking for a reason to not be an honoring son, but to be egregious, greedy, and covetous. They were far from what they said they proclaimed to be. Now apply that today. I know you've seen many people that say they're Christians and you've got to scratch your head and wonder. But when you're doing that, examine your own life. That's why Jesus said, Woe to you Pharisees and scribes and teachers of the law. What about you? I'm not talking about your neighbor down the road. I'm talking about you. And how is your relationship with your mother? Let's start there today and see. If there's anything that needs to be mended, give it to Jesus. He'll take it. He'll take that burden. He won't be judgmental or hypocritical or anything else. He'll say, I'll take it. I'll cleanse you. I'll give you healing that you never knew you could have if you'll just let me. Jesus showed us how to love to the very end. So let's look at His final words and see what He said on the cross. Luke 23, 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up His clothes by casting lots. Jesus saw what they were doing. We have both parts of that verse. They didn't care anything about Him. They weren't concerned at all that they were crucifying the Son of God or cru crucifying an innocent man that Pilate had already said or anything else. They were worried about greed, dividing up His clothes. Wow. But what was Jesus concerned about? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Remember why I came to earth? You sent me so that I could take their place, that I could pay the penalty of their sins. So, Father, forgive them for what they're doing. If you go down to verse 43 in Luke 23, Jesus answered him and said, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. So here's two thieves on the cross. One who said, I don't want any part of him. If you are who you say you are, take yourself up off the cross and take me with you while you're at it. Why? 
I'm a, I'm a thief or a murderer, and I'm up here getting what I deserve. Why in the world would I take you off? But you know, if he would have simply believed, he could have heard the answer, today you'll be with me in paradise. Because we don't get what we deserve. Instead, we get mercy and grace. In Matthew 27, 46, about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. Did it the best I could. Which means, my God, my God, why have, for you, why have you forsaken me? Because Jesus knew that the Father was abandoning him. For the first time ever, the Trinity was separated. God turned His back on His only Son to save you and I because He carried our sin and shame so that that could be done once and for all so that He could look upon us with Jesus' righteousness, that that sacrifice would be acceptable. It would be payment in full so we could stand before the throne and say not guilty because we're covered with Jesus' righteousness. Mark 15, 34 says the same thing. John chapter 19 Verse 25 through 27, we get a little perspective. And remember, this is from the man who said, Should we rain down fire and thunder on these people? As a young man, but now, as he's writing this letter later, and we see it in his other works, we see that Jesus really did change him, that he's a new creation in Christ, because he talks about love, love, and more love. He says, If we sin, in his words. And he teaches us to love one another, because that's what... Jesus Christ did for us. So in Luke 19, verse 25, John records, Near the cross of Jesus stood His mother, His mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw His mother there, and the disciple whom He loved standing nearby, He said to her, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. John 19, verses 28 through 30. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that Scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on the stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When He had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, He bowed His head and gave up His spirit. And that's prophecy that they're talking about is from Psalm 69, 21. They put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for thirst. So once everything was accomplished, Jesus fulfilled prophecy again with His words. But He said, it is finished because it was complete. What He had came here to do was done. But let's back up one. Let's back back up to the John 19. Before He said it was finished, He had compassion for His mother. His mother who was there. We don't know what other disciples were there that had followed Jesus for three years in ministry. We know John was there, but we don't know about anyone else. And John likes to quote that he's the one that Jesus loved. And you know, when I first read that, I used to think about, wow, he's kind of self-centered. But then when I see the change in him, no, he's not. He's saying he sees the love of Christ. There's a big difference. I'm glad I am loved by God. I'm glad I'm loved by Jesus. So I can say, I am the one that He loves. And if you look back at that Old Testament command to, to honor your mother and father that your may, days may be long, John's life was longer than any other disciple. He got the responsibility of becoming Mary's son. He took that role. When Jesus died, He appointed John in His place. And He said, here is your son. So she would know that she was going to be taken care of. Like I said earlier, most likely she didn't have her husband anymore. She needed the care of her son, but her son was taken away from her earlier. It wasn't supposed to be that way, but yet it was supposed to be that way because that's why Jesus came. So Jesus appointed John, the one who truly changed and saw that love, to take care of his mother. And from that point on, Scripture says, the disciple took her into his home. That means as his own mother. No regards, no reservations, nothing else. No worries about the baggage she's going to have emotionally from seeing her son crucified or anything else. He honored her as his mother, as Scripture says. And he got a promise with that because he got to live longer before he died than the other disciples did. He got that privileged. 
he got the honor to be able to call himself the one that the Lord loved because he was following after his commandments. So go back to Jesus. He was bearing all the physical, mental anguish that he was. He was taking on the sin. So don't, don't just think about the physical or the mental of being crucified, but of taking on sin for someone who was sinless. From being separated from God for someone who never knew what it was like to be apart from God. Who was God. And in that time of turmoil, he had time to think about his mother. What an example. What an example of us. To, to live out a life that God has intended for us. To obey His commands. And command number five is to honor your father and mother. And it has a promise. So that your days may be long and well in the land the Lord your God has given you. So don't forget that. Now is the time to honor your mother. To follow after Jesus' example. There could be no greater example of honoring your mother. Just as there can be no greater example in anything that you do in life. Jesus fulfilled God's law to the exact letter. He fulfilled God's request, desire, plan, perfect will of coming and being sacrificed for you and I. He taught salvation to the end to the thief on the cross. He asked forgiveness to the end for us, for we know not what we do. And to the end, He took care of His mother. So if you have the opportunity today and your mother is still here, honor her. Give her the respect and honor that she deserves. And not just today, but all days. Father, we do thank you so much for the mothers that we have. We know that you are in control of all things. So you gave us the mother that you gave us. She was exactly the one that you wanted us to have. Help us to realize that. Help us to not worry about our own desires, to be covetous or anything, to learn from the Pharisees from what they did and to, to expose ourselves so that Jesus can take that sin and shame from us and bring us healing. Help us to remember what he taught about the man who cleansed the demons out of his rooms but didn't fill himself back with the Spirit of God. Help us to fill ourselves completely with Jesus so that we may be the light of Jesus to this world. Thank you for the parents that you've given us and help us to bring special glory and honor to our mothers today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.